Several years ago, I created this photo manipulation just for fun and I named it Learn to Fly from obvious reasons. And now I decided to remake it, to recreate another better version, more cinematic, different approach, different light and a little bit more details in the scene. And this is what I got. So in today's video, you will see the breakdown of how I created this. You will see a speed art because the full tutorial will be pretty long because it took me several hours to create this from scratch. So enjoy the process. Everything started from this really rough sketch that you can see on the screen and then I started populating the scene following roughly the sketch that I made pretty quickly. You can see there are just basically shapes that represent the ovals, trees, branches, basic positions where I want to place certain elements in the scene. Then I got this oval and other elements that I use for this photo manipulation from Envato Elements. They're the sponsor for today's episode. And in case you don't know, Envato Elements is an amazing website where you can find millions of stock photos, stock videos, audio files, sound effects. My favorite part, 3D models, a huge library of 3D models where you can use them in any position, any irritation that you need for your photo manipulations or any other project and they are extracted out to the background with shadows and everything. Also, they have a bunch of transitions, fonts, and uh, intros, outros for your videos, and a bunch of other cool things that you can find, practically all the assets for any projects you are creating. An amazing thing is that they're pretty affordable. If you go for the annual plan, they're just $16.5 per month. You can try them for free following the link down there in the description and see if this is something for you. I personally love them and using them a lot. And this photo manipulation was possible because of the assets that I found there, especially the ovals, because they're pretty hard to find the ovals in certain positions and orientations that I needed for this project. And also you have unlimited downloads, plus all the assets are licensed, so you don't need to worry about that. So check Envato Elements with the link down there in the description and enjoy at least your free trials there. As you can see here, I'm playing with the trees. I want to have another set of the trees on the left side of the scene and I want to place the branch there with these really cute ovals, like they're in the back a little bit blurry and uh, further away from the camera watching what is going on here in the forest. What is going on? Will this young oval manage to learn to fly from the first try or she will just fall there uh, on the ground and then start again? Who knows? We will see. And uh, you can see I playing with the texture of the branch because the original one I, I didn't like. I just copied it from this left tree and placed it over the top of the original one. And uh, then I just use another photo of the forest as a background and blur it a lot because I want to have it out of focus and use Adobe Camera to just change the colors a little bit. I changed it again because I didn't like this blue tint. I went more towards the green. Then I start to light painting the scene. You will see that a lot here, all the elements I light painted because they were not quite uh, lit as I wanted, as I imagined it. So my idea is to light the scene a little bit from the left and the back. So to make it a little bit more cinematic and uh, you have a full tutorial of how to do light painting. You can check it out on the link down in the description. And also here you can see I just added the texture on that hole in the tree and now I continue to light paint this oval and other elements so enjoy that process. Just a quick explanation what I did here. I took a branch from Avada Elements. The branch was 3D model, so I was able to uh, get a proper orientation and proper angle that I need for this scene. And over the top of that branch, I copied the texture of this tree and just bend it 
with puppet warp tool and place it over the top to blend it a little bit more better and then just use exposure adjustment layer to create a shadow and uh, basically that's that's the whole process and here i just expanded made more thicker entrance to this tree After changing the colors a little bit of the owl, I just paint the shadow beneath the big owl here. I use empty layer with multiple blending modes, sample the color of the branch and just paint it how the shadow would look approximately if this is a real situation and also a bit of the shadow on the tree and lower the opacity and that's basically it. More light painting here because one of the most important rules in photo manipulation is that the owls need to be happy. Actually all the elements need to have the same lighting conditions and if you want to know more about photo manipulations, if you're new to this world, if you want to learn everything from scratch, step by step, how to create cinematic photo manipulations, I have a full course dedicated to that. You can find it in the link down there in the description and learn all the essentials that you need in order to create cinematic photo manipulations. Then I use some feathers from the baby owl to create more dynamic in the scene. I motion blur it so to have impression, to make even better impression that this owl is actually on the move. It's like uh, jumped from that or actually pushed by, by this big owl from that branch. And also I made a copy of the owl, two more copies to actually motion blur it and put it behind the main uh, model and just lower the opacity and uh, basically mask certain parts out just to make like a motion trail from that all just a subtle motion trail just to make that impression that actually this this all is on the go I did the same thing for the wings of the big owl to make the scene more dynamic to make the impression that she's actually moving the wings and pushing the baby owl of the branch Next thing what I did here is populating the scene with these really cool branches that are 3D models from Amato Elements and I light painting it because you know the first rule of auto manipulation the owls must be happy so you need to match the conditions of all the elements in the scene and also I place them in the front plan closer to the camera blur them out and make the scene overall more interesting. Instead of manually painting those light rays, I went to Envato Elements and got one bundle of 75 different light rays, which I really love. It's really simple and easy to just place them and put them in the screen blending mode. And this is how I got them here in the scene to make overall scene even more interesting. Then I got this nail. It's a subtle element here, not noticeable almost if you don't know that it's there, but I really love to put something like that in the scene and just added shadow, light conditions, same like all the elements in the scene. And also then use another overlay elements from Envato Elements, like to have a little bit more dust in the light rays, just another detail there that I really liked a lot. So after placing all the elements and change the colors etc, I experimented a little bit with the position of this left tree and the oval etc and you will see me doing that just uh, rotating, moving and so on and so forth and after that I will do a final color grading using Adobe Camera and you will see the final result. But before that 
final color grading, I decided that I need to put another animal here. So this really cool deer that I just extracted out of the background and place it behind the tree. I use puppet work tool to just tilted the neck a little bit and the head, as you can see. And then basically again, did the same thing like with the overalls, changed the lighting conditions because the overalls must be happy. You all know that. So that's the first rule of auto manipulation. And then basically uh, after, after making uh, the right basically size and position of uh, this deer, I went and did the final color grading in Adobe Camera. What do you think about the final result? Please let me know down there in the comment section below. And if you want to learn more about photo manipulation, I have a full dedicated course to that. So you can check it out in the links down there in the description and also a bunch of really cool step-by-step -step tutorials on my channel. So you can continue watching, for example, this one. See you next week in the next one episode. Bye-bye.